Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. Today we're at the Green Festivals in San Francisco, California, and we've got Kristen Hess with us. She's the founder and marketing director of Compo Keeper. Welcome to Green is Good, Kristen. Thank you, John. And we've got a Compo Keeper right here in front of us. Yes, this is the Compo Keeper. Before we talk about this Compo Keeper, and I love the color of it, by, by the way. Thank you. Um, I, want to talk, I want to talk a little bit about the Kristen Hess story. Talk okay. a little bit about your journey in life where did you get the sustainability bug? Was it from childhood? Was it from education? Was yeah. it just from the environment and friends and family along the, your journey? Share your journey a little bit with our listeners, please. Sure, okay. Um, so I grew up in Boulder, Colorado. It's, it's um, a very, very green and environmentally friendly place. Beautiful scenery. It's, it's just, um, it's a, definitely a place to visit. Um, and when I was in school at CU, I studied business, and I also studied, I took a course on sustainable operations, oh. and I learned all about how businesses could really impact um, and, and change the way that they were doing things so that instead of being harmful for, to the environment, they could actually be part of the solution and actually lead um, society to, to be more sustainable. Um, so that was really kind of the, the push that got me going towards a career in sustainability. Um, meanwhile, my dad um, was inventing this compost bin in our garage. And so after I graduated, I jumped on board and really helped bring Combo Keeper to the marketplace. So your dad also had the bug a little bit in his inventiveness. Mm -hmm. He did, yes, as a very handy person. Um, he was actually solving a problem that our own family was having um, in Boulder. As I said, it's very sustainable, a very green place. We um, we got curbside composting in 2008. It's um, the municipalities come around and they pick up yard and food waste from homes and businesses, and um, they give you this small one to two gallon pail for collecting your food waste in the kitchen. And so what we found is that odors and fruit flies were a really big issue with those pails that they give out. And also that you had to have to take them out all the time because you use a lot of compostable waste while you're cooking. You would make a lot of compostable waste. So um, what he did is he solved his own problem. He went into the garage. He took a, a big six gallon container and built in clamps into the bin that would seal a compostable bag so kind of like a Ziploc bag, so it'd keep everything contained. Wow. Yeah, so that took care of the odors and fruit flies, and it also allowed him to only empty it about once a week instead of every other day. So when did you guys, when did your dad's design and your bug for sustainability merge, and you founded then what it looks like a beautiful product that's in front of us called the Compo Keeper? When did, was yeah. this founded? So it was really founded in 2008 is when the very first prototype was made. Um, and then in 2010, I graduated from CU Boulder. Um, I went and did this sustainable volunteering at a, um, at a health and wellness retreat and learned about permaculture. And then as soon as that was over, I was on board. I was like, okay, I'm gonna use my marketing education and we're gonna, we're gonna make this a reality so that other people can be less afraid of composting. Got it. Yeah. And so you launched it. How do you get the word out? Did you start selling it in stores, online, and, and how, how did you start getting the word out? Yeah, so uh, we actually just launched after years of prototyping, um, development, and making this an actual um, model that can be manufactured uh, with injection molding. We just launched in September and um, right now it's available on our website at combokeeper.com um, and we're working on distribution. We're, um, we're talking to some retailers so that it's really easy to find in any city across so the nation. So combokeeper.com, C-O-M-P-O keeper.com. Yeah. Combokeeper. Right on the front. Com. Explain how, you know, what is the environmental benefits of composting for our listeners yeah. out there that want to buy it but want to understand the whole cost-benefit analysis of composting? Yeah, so um, composting is great because it takes, 
It takes nutrients that are in food um, and the parts that we don't use and it recycles them back into soil. Um, and that's what you'll, you'll hear referred to as compost, is the actual finished compost that you can then use in your garden um, or in even like restoration projects. And what it does is it just, it feeds the plants, it gives them more nutrients. So it makes, you know, produce more nutrient rich. Um, and it also sequesters carbon from the atmosphere. So it's helping in that way as well. And where would this product typically go if we weren't composting it? Where would it go historically? Yeah, well, in the landfill, right? Most people um, are used to just throwing everything from their kitchen into the trash, and then that heads to the landfill. And what happens in the landfill is that food waste becomes anaerobic, which means that it's not getting oxygen. Oh. Um, and what happens with organic waste when it becomes anaerobic is that it uh, releases methane air, uh, methane gas into the so atmosphere. So it's, it's a waste of product, first of all, to go to landfill. It waste, fills it up, it creates it more waste in the air and the land when it could be going back to fertilize yeah. and re revitalize our whole, our whole right. ecosystem. Or it could be a closed loop where it just goes back to grow more food. Wow, yeah. that is just great. So it's all part of the circular economy composting is, the new circular exactly. economy. And when you use compost, you don't have to use other uh, synthetic fertilizers, which first of all take energy and create pollution to produce. Um, but they're also they have a lot of negative impacts um, in when people consume them and on the water supply. So we're just getting rid of all those chemicals and doing something that nature does by itself. Kristen, I'm in the electronic waste recycling business as a profession. And what we see with the cities that we represent and, and serve, that there's three major trends going on in those cities. Both electronic recycling, textile recycling, and composting. Talk about how that mega trend that seems to be really on fire now across America, in cities especially, how that will positively affect your brand and how you can interrelate the founding of your company with the real trend and desire now for many households across America to, to compost in their home. Yeah, so um, so I think the big push to keep things out of the landfill and find uh, more uses is, is, is becoming a very, very widely known. We're, we're understanding the impacts and we want to make sure that the future for our children is um, just as good, if not better, as uh, our lives are now. Um, and also, you know, all the land and uh, sea creatures. But um, so as, as recycling is embraced by America and across the world, composting is really the next um, lowest hanging fruit. And so, and it's so easy and we're all creating it. Uh, US households create about um, a third of their waste stream is actually compostable waste. Wow. So, yeah, we're it's throwing there away for the so taking. much. Yeah. Does the city have to have a composting program to be able to for the, for our listeners and viewers to be able to buy your product and compost? No. So um, the bags that work with the combo keeper are 100% compostable. They are recommended for municipal facilities. Um, but they do compost in the soil over time. And what we recommend for backyard composters is to bury them. And uh, they will compost in about six months. If, um, but when you have a backyard pile, if you're going to use your compost for your garden, then you can keep the bags out because they'll tend to slow down the process. And you really want to get the compost as fast as you can and um, you know, get it hot. So if you keep the, the bags out, you can bury them. Um, but the, it's also great for curbside composting because you really, it's, it's super low maintenance. You don't have to do a lot of work. So anyone in America who's watching the show now or listening can buy your, your, your great product in front of us and use it. Yes. Explain how Absolutely. it works. So there are clamps inside the bin um, that when you open the combo keeper, it opens the clamps, I'll show you. So the clams are open, and then while you're cleaning up, while you're cooking, you can just toss your food scraps in there, and then when you close it, I'm just gonna unhook this one. Nice. Then you would push down on this, um, and it seals 
the compostable bag. So it's kind of, it's fashioned after a Ziploc bag. Um, seals odors in and fruit flies out. There's also a, a charcoal filter in the lid to help absorb any extra odor. It's six gallons, so you don't have to take it out as often, as I mentioned. And um, when you do take it out, there's a bag tray inside that helps you pull out the compostable bag. So you don't have to worry about the bag exploding or dripping all over your floor. And how much does this, uh, this uh, model cost right here? So it's available on our website for $99.50. Um, and it comes with 12 compostable bags and two filters. And do they buy extra bags from you or they can buy it from their local store? They can use any bags they would like. We do. We made our bags specifically for the Compo Keeper for the longer storage. So they are thicker. They're also the, the perfect size so there's not a lot of extra bag. You're not, you don't have that extra waste. Um, so they can buy our bags on our website and they can even sign up for a subscription service where you only sign up once. You tell us how often you want us to send you the bags and we'll take care of it from there. Wow. And I see that you donate 1% for zero waste education. Explain that to yes. our listeners. So um, we think that the children are really they're shaping our future and um, I hear so often people there are, there are green programs at school and the children then come home to their parents and they say we have to start composting so they're really going to start leading this effort towards zero waste and so we want to make those green programs more available to children across the nation so we're donating one percent of our sales to That's those awesome. efforts yeah. well for our listeners and viewers out there you see it right here in front of you the Compo Keeper, you can go to www.compokeeper.com, C-O-M-P-O, keeper.com. Kristen Hess, we thank you for being a guest on Green is Good today. You are truly living proof that green is good. Thank you, John. Thank you.